going on, world? What's now with your boy, John Marshall? I got some special guests that are in the building. They need no introduction, but I'm going to let them introduce themselves, talk to the viewers, the listeners, and the internet all around the world, especially the people that don't need a podcast. Talk okay. especially to them. What? Introduce yourself. <laughs> Tell them who y'all are. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? I'm Patrick Cloud. Hey, By man. the way, great radio voice. You weren't talking like that before. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you heard me turn it on? Yeah, you turned oh, so it on. they on my you head now, too. Up, so they, 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 they on my head now, too. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm Persephone. Thank you for having us. Hey, no, this absolutely. Is dope as hell. So ran into y'all uh, at the Revolt World Conference, mm-hmm. yes. and I see this guy, and I was like, "That looks like Pat from All Def Digital." Mm-hmm. The roast me, and the, I was like, "Pat," and he was just like, "What up?" <laughs> I'm like, "Bro, John, big fan." Like, <laughs> and then we just linked up mm-hmm. from there. Um, hell and yeah. Again, I appreciate y'all sliding through to the station. Yeah. Thanks for the invite. Just for coming absolutely. to kick it this with is me. So cool. this- you invited us like it wasn't one of the biggest radio stations in, in the world. In the world. And, I mean, now, now we, we will take that. We said, will take that compliment. A monopoly. You know oh, what I'm no, saying? Look, hey, uh, largest audio company in America, 860 yeah. radio stations across the United mm-hmm. States Tell and outside the country as well. So well, we know about it. Come it's on, a blessing stats. for me to be here. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Um, and, and they need some more of us uh-huh. uh, around here in Period. India. So you know what I'm saying? that's what we're here for. So we're just going to kick it for a little bit if y'all got a little bit of time. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, say no more. Absolutely. You know what? We pulled Proper up on radio you. etiquette means turn your phone off on silent. Turn hey, it off. Yeah, yeah, I got that. We are, we are hey, bro, I'm doing an interview. I got to call you right back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Damn, I really want somebody to call me now. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's just a hell of a I don't be getting right. calls like that, but I really want to say that to somebody I know. Damn, so why my mama um, didn't call me when I need her to? Right, look, all right, not watch. She's going to send a text. Hey, call me real quick. She <laughs> called me when we was live on the For sure. doing the podcast. Word. Like, how did that go, by the way? How, how did it go? Because y'all were on stage what, earlier today, right? Yeah. yeah. We, 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 we went on the uh, culture stage. Cool. Yep. Um, and it was very random, too, because uh, we've, been, we've been with Revolt for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and they invited us out. Uh, and it it was just very it was very cool because we yeah. were just like on the bill with huge names like Carisha yeah. Please, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, drink champs. Obviously, they put us a little earlier than. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey you know, we better than not being hey, on the bill yeah, at all, you know right? What? We had an early spot, but they pulled up. Uh-huh. They pulled up, and and also we're very very new podcast. Mm-hmm. You know, we we ideated and uh, started this a year ago. Yeah, you know? we launched with Revolt. Podcast Network. Okay, bet. Yeah. Bet, bet. So, yeah. so we're a year in. Yeah, we were and, in the family, and they they told us to pull up, and, we and did. this was the very first time that we went live. So, so take me back to the beginning uh, of when all of this kind of started, just mm-hmm. from a media perspective mm-hmm. for both of y'all. Yes, Pat, I know that uh, all deaf digital. I know you've been producing content for years now. I know you're into the music, all yeah. those different things mm-hmm. like that. So just take me back to the genesis of where this love for media started and kind of take me through the timeline of how we end up at Revolt. Oh, shit. Okay. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's, a, that's a good, yeah, good yeah, one, yeah, huh? No, no. You, <laughs> he's trained, ladies and gentlemen. That's why he's here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I would say the, the, the love for media started for me as a kid. You know, mm-hmm. I was... You know, it's, what's crazy... Um, I grew up thinking I was going to be a bunch of different things. I was never that kid that was like, I want to be a firefighter and Mm -hmm. then grew up and became a firefighter. Like it was all like, I wanted to be a video game designer. I wanted to be a musician. I wanted to be Mm -hmm. all these things. And I think that's because being a um, social media influencer or or running your own stuff didn't exist yet. Mm, That is true. Because it's like, I I kind of like was thrown into that. And at first it was kind of lame, you know what I mean? Because everybody mm-hmm. was doing it. Mm-hmm. Right. But then when it really took off, it became a platform where you can really do anything that you want without waiting for people. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's the wave right now. People are like, they got the equipment, you know what I mean? They, they, they there's not, there's less gatekeepers, mm-hmm. um, and you can really uh, do the product that you want to do without waiting for somebody to check, like to sign right. off on it. Mm-hmm. So you know, I think that I always tell my friends because we grew up wanting to be all types of different stuff. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if we grew up in this era, we would want to be, you know, YouTubers, streamers, mm-hmm. anybody who has control over their own content and can create an audience based on what they like. Mm-hmm. So that's always been brewing. And, you know, when I worked with All Def, I, w- I started off behind the scenes and because I thought that was more longevity. You know, mm-hmm. like I think that producing and learning how to make something is more important than uh, making something and telling somebody how to be in that thing. You right. know? They, had you, they had you pumping out content like crazy, oh, man. Oh, that, that's man. stuff that you there were creating. Was, uh, content king. Yeah, there was up. a <laughs> There was a period in time I owed a, I, I owed a new show to them every two months. Ooh. A, a and brand new Ooh. original new, a concept new show. show? Yep. That is wild. And what's crazy is a lot of people make shows 
for a, a, like a, a little bit of time, they'll make an idea that maybe has eight to ten episodes max. Mm -hmm. I needed to make shows that can go forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is insanely difficult right. because especially two new ones. Mm -hmm. it's or, or a it's, new one every two crazy. months. Every yeah, two months? because yeah. that's a lot of work. I feel like everybody in here is somewhat creative from mm -hmm. what I've seen, and and it's like when you work on something for too long, you kind of want to make something else. Right. You know? mm -hmm. but when you make something that works, a company. Uh, like they attach themselves to that and they're like let's do this until it fails mm -hmm. and you're just like can I make something else mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? and in your case it's like yeah you can give yeah. it to us every 60 for nights sure. <laughs> right, for right. sure That's so long wild. story short I just got into making all types of different stuff and then podcasting came along and I started making podcasts I had one that was by myself mm -hmm. And that was around the time we started working together. So okay. Persephone was, uh, I had a show called Great Taste, which was like a, a panel show that we argued about stupid stuff. So mm -hmm. it would be like, it would be like if this whole room was talking about fucking French fries, mm -hmm. and you were like, Popeyes has the best French fries, and right. Persephone was like, McDonald's. Yes. And, and them over there was like, you know, Burger King, all these things. And we just had to argue with mm -hmm. each other. And it was dumb, but it was it worked, it worked you know? Yeah, My yeah, episode yeah. was Best Brunch. Best Brunch. Best Brunch. Yeah, okay. I had best mimosas. You had what? I had uh, something. Oh, in best brunch foods. Yeah, yeah. Brunch we all. Grits. That's yours. Shrimp and grits. Oh, Why man. brunch instead of breakfast, though? Um, because that is a good. That is a good brunch. It it, it is. Uh, why brunch instead of breakfast? I'm not waking up early enough for breakfast. Mm, hilarious. Yes. I've never heard that answer. I'm not waking up early enough. Bre <laughs> I can only That's catch brunch. I can literally brunch only catch brunch. Brunch is really the first, yeah. the first meal. That's Breakfast yeah. and lunch. I never, so. I never was told something based on the time. <laughs> it was always the food. But yeah, uh, Persephone came through. She killed it. Uh, we I had became the flu. friends. Uh -huh. Yeah, she was sick. Really? I had the flu. Uh, uh, the flu <laughs> game. So you did, you did a flu <laughs> game. Talk, wait, wait, wait. Hey. Can we just talk about that real, uh, real quick? She that was pulled up to ago. a studio, with the, no with the windows, flu. with the flu, the flu, risking getting all of us sick just because she wanted a little check and nobody. <laughs> hey, got to go I get that money. Look, I didn't want to disappoint spreader. them because this was the first time I was going to be working with them. Super spreader. Nobody got sick. <laughs> uh, you don't know that. <laughs> nobody got sick. But yeah, I didn't want I didn't want to cancel. That was my first time working with all Got to make that first good impression. You're not going to cancel on the first one. Like, hey, guys, uh, by like, the way. But um, every cut, I went yeah. to the bathroom. And, you Gross. know, like disgusting. all messed up. I had, I had You're a disgusting person. Hey, but you see where we at now. Hey, look. So hey, we we up. Up. <laughs> Obviously, it worked, right? right? Yeah, she uh, she she ended up uh, hitting me up because I, um, I had a podcast. It was called The Cloudy Podcast. I still do it, but mm. it's, it's for Patreon now. Mm. But it, for gotcha. at the time, it was for YouTube, and it was just me. Mm. I have about four podcasts right now, and this is the only one that's just me. So she hit me up, and she was like, can I be a guest mm -hmm. and um, I don't think you had ever had a guest on the couch. She was my first podcast. guest. Really? Okay. And, uh, dope, dope. We, she, she came through. We hung out. The audience loved it. Uh, we had a whole bunch of chem chemistry, but that was it. Mm -hmm. That was basically it. I think we went for like two hours almost. Oh, yeah. wow. It was a long time. And yeah. I want to say that was like maybe like two or three years before Revolt. Yeah, that was maybe four. It was a minute, yeah. but we just kind of knew that we could work together. Mm -hmm. And then uh, her manager? Yeah. Her manager, Damien, hit me up mm -hmm. and said, um, Revolt starting a podcast network. My specialty is just like making shows. Mm -hmm. So right. I guess uh, he went to her, his name's Damien, and said, is there anybody that you w could have a podcast with? And she mentioned me, and they hit mm -hmm. me up and uh, said, we need to develop something. So I got on the phone with Persephone, and we, uh, we came up with Thick Threads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a year ago, and we shot one episode. We, we turned it into Revolt. And they loved it. Was it. The, they loved the, it. The episode is called go. My Fiance has a micro penis. Hmm. You feel me? Okay. Yeah. That would get somebody's <laughs> attention yeah. immediately. Yeah. I can only imagine turning that into like the network executive. That was our pitch Here episode. We go. Like, what's it called? My fiance has a micro penis. Yeah. Right. right. No, yeah, you got their attention. Okay. That's sure. right. And, yeah. and I think it was very important for us to make something that like, was just fun, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. I think you were mentioning earlier, like podcasts suck nowadays. Mm -hmm. just the, 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 it's just flooded. Yeah. It's flooded. Any and it's everything. negative. Yeah. yeah, it's like the clips that I personally think that the problem with social media right now is like you can have ten clips that are insanely positive. Mm -hmm. And one that's horrifying. That's right. the one that's, that's gonna. That's you the know, one that pops. It's like news. If it bleeds, <laughs> right. it leads. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's in, in the journalism world. If it bleeds, it leads. Bruh. So 
there there is no not that I've heard of a good news network. You know what I'm saying? That's just talking right, about right. nothing but good news. Because nobody yeah. really want to hear that. Right. Same thing with kind of like reality TV and all that stuff like that, or mm-hmm. at least the ratchet kind of stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's right. what people want to see. And like we were saying earlier, there is a space and a place for all of that. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I just, I do enjoy some engaging and substantive, but still entertaining mm-hmm. and creative content mm-hmm. as well. My my journey is a little is a little different than than his, as I didn't really come up in the creative space. Right, that's what I, I wanted to get into, how you kind of came into yeah, it. Yeah, so I actually, I was a therapist for 10 years. Marriage really? and family therapy. I have a master's in psychology with an emphasis in MFT. Big brain energy. Yeah, okay. so I worked with juvenile sex offenders all throughout my, my younger adult years. And um, I wasn't really, I, I had to keep my look like goofy, funny self kind of yeah right right because you're dealing you know? with some heavy stuff you yeah know, so with, i'm dealing yeah. with some heavy stuff but once i i left that i started doing actually like comedy sketches mm-hmm. so i started working with um a creator called big jaw oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. to the max yes to the max, to the max. Yes, yes. so once we started Blue working commercial yes <laughs> yes that is that i, I, I told you i love I the content the, out there i am there, the y'all. female <laughs> bluetooth yeah, yes, I, I, yes. I, I, so <laughs> they work like that's yeah. a, <laughs> hey, hey you feel hey, come on come on <laughs> Blue Chew <laughs> is my, my shit. Let us get a check. Blue Chew, okay? <laughs> my God. So, so yes, I definitely work with Blue Chew, and uh-huh. we got millions and millions and millions and millions of views with the, the content we create. Dope. But that's kind of where I started um, uh, with a creator called Troy in L.A., Big Ja, Official Minx. Mm-hmm. Like, we all... Um, kind of, kind of came up together. Now I wasn't really in this. They just asked me because I got some big ass titties. This so is true. My titties this are bigger true. than this the average true. woman. This is true. <laughs> and so uh, when people would see me on the thumbnail, they like, what? The we fuck? clicking on I'm this. Clicking. We don't know. We don't know what it is, but we clicking on right. it. I'm here for the thumbnail, so I'm like, well, shit. Well, then I'm gonna give you a thumbnail that makes you want to click. So um, we started working together, and our just it just took off. So we continued with the comedy sketches, mm-hmm. and then I ended up meeting Pat. Like he said, I kind I felt like I kind of bullied my way onto his. Line. I'm like, I want to be in your podcast. Right, right, He's right. He's like, I ain't never had a guest, but sure, whatever works. So yeah, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. like, cool. So we had a really, really, really good. Uh, episode yep. that that lasted and people in the comments were like yo y'all should be mm-hmm. co-hosts you should bring her on more and, mm-hmm. and you know the more I did he also has another uh, podcast called Damn Internet You Scary mm-hmm. and on that I, I was a guest with him and to hear more mm-hmm. and so I came shout on there Tahir. and shout out to to hear we love to hear um our, the episodes that I came on ended up being like an hour and a half mm-hmm. like much longer than what um, what they would usually do with guests. And so people were all, always talking about, mm-hmm. oh, you should come on more often or whatever. And so I think that's where it kind of, the seed got planted. Right, right. Where like, chemistry started hey, really well. You know, yeah, so yeah. when Dame hit yeah. me up, that's my manager, Damian mm-hmm. Ritter, shout out. Um, Big Dame. He hit me up about the revolt. I was like, yo, shit, who else? Like, who wouldn't ask? Absolutely. Pack the cloud to be. You know, I was nervous he wouldn't go say yes. You know what I'm saying? So he did, and we came up with the premise, and and that's that's how it began. So we actually launched our podcast with the Revolt Podcast Network. Right. So we're in like the first class of podcasts. Of podcasts coming out of okay, so that's coming a out of Revolt. Yeah. Perfect uh, segue into let's talk about the podcast mm-hmm. that you all are doing on Revolt uh, Podcast Network. Give me some get, for the people that don't know mm-hmm. and the people that haven't heard of it or been able to engage with it yet. Give me some background on, because y'all are what, one year in, you said? About, yeah, about yep. a year in? Yeah, okay. August. I think August made our, our one yeah. year. What a way to celebrate a one year, yeah. doing it on a big stage and the it's A insane. and everything it's, like that. It, it really is insane. That, that, like, that's really dope, though. We yeah. don't, I mean, I can't, I can't. You can speak I can't for me. Speak Go for ahead and say it. Because <laughs> her, her numbers are kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. For me, it's like, nothing takes that long. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's difficult for me to try to get my friends and other people into this because mm-hmm. it's it's a it's a grind. No, it definitely is. And it's is. like I'm mm-hmm. constantly trying to tell my friends like get into YouTube, get into Twitch, get into streaming, get into get podcast. Started. But it's like as hard as it is to get that through it originally, mm-hmm. now it's like okay, now you have to do it for probably nobody for like a year. Right, <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? You have to go live and see three people you in it. Gotta just, be just crazy. Gotta cut through all that noise and everybody <laughs> right. else and all oh the people that are God. getting all those huge mm-hmm. crazy it's views and all rough. that stuff. And yeah, then man. you gotta go through the mental shit where it's mm-hmm. like, 
I put my heart into this and the only and two nobody comments. Cares. Well, no, it's even worse than that. The two comments are like, hang it up. <laughs> <laughs> this shit this is her. Discouragement. <laughs> all you are around. Ugly. And you then you gotta I mean? go record like, another episode after that. They're like, like they'll tell me I'm live trying to be funny, and uh, they're like, show the titties. Show us your boobs. Show you're us your like, bro, that's my only Show feedback. us your bobs. <laughs> that's my only and I'm oh, like, your question. Bobs. Question. I uh-huh. asked it, and I, I, want, I want y'all to continue with that, but I asked Pat uh, earlier, right before we got on the show, is a titty a titty if it doesn't have a nipple? Thank you. We're getting to the what real the shit now. No, I know. Right. Hang on. What? Hang on. No, it's a chest. About it. No, no, a chest got nipples too. It ain't nothing. What? Here's what, what I is said. A titty? It's a titty. Yeah, give me, give me the. <laughs> I said, how important is the areola? Because Extremely. to me, when the areola shows, that's the nip slip. It's not the nipple poking out the top. It's the areola. So... My whole thing is, I nah. feel like the areola at this point is more important than the, the nipple itself. Now, we, we, we do have a ticket expert in the building, so. Me. You, uh, no, uh, oh, <laughs> oh, wait, you're the oh, ticket expert? I would be the I titty would, expert, would, absolutely. I feel like any of us I could be a titty know, expert. I think we could all be experts at this point. <laughs> of course. Man, you could be the one that <laughs> course, that you do. That was so experience. misogynistic. Don't cancel so, us. So this is Don't what I'm going to tell you about the nipple, if you might not know. I'm going to put you up on some game about the nipple. It's functional. Here's where it's not fair. It, 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 <laughs> it is that functional. is true. It is it is it is responsible for feeding, giving life. So uh, yes, for, it ain't censored off a, the TV because it feeds babies. There's though. a lady that feeds her husband. Uh, oh, I saw that. I saw a clip of that. And they were like, that's seriously so, sitting down talking about like, wild. yeah, you know, I like to drink her milk. And, you yeah. know, we just got into You hey, haven't seen that I yet? Have. I mean, he's okay. probably the healthiest <laughs> nigga out here. Right, probably. <laughs> What's Excuse wrong me? with you? Healthiest man out here. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> okay. Um, no, but, but what I'm saying is they do say a nip slip with the areola, but if it doesn't have one, so I'm just going to go a little into it. There are people who get them removed. Areolas? Yes. Areolas? They, they get the boobs removed, so sometimes oh. it, it just looks like stitches mm-hmm. right here. Are, are oh, I, see, okay, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I thought you uh-huh. meant the areolas. So, so people who have gotten mastectomies mm-hmm. have, they can actually go shirtless, right. topless, mm-hmm. and there be no problem because You know that ain't what we talking there. about, though. I'm just hey, putting it out there. We talking about titties, <laughs> not titties <laughs> titties. Well, what you want not me to say? Titties. Have you ever seen a titty with no nipple? Uh, Barbie. <laughs> 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 but it's trying, I'm just trying to think my imagination here. Okay? Areolas are, are too beautiful like it's, things. It's too much they variety. Mm-hmm. There, I've seen small titties where the areola was Is like the whole this. titty. <laughs> what? The pepperonis? Cookie. Cookie. Cookie nipple? Whoa. How many nipples is on this? <laughs> Wait, can y'all coin that? Christ. I've never heard that. I've only heard uh, saucers trademark that. and yes. pepperonis. <laughs> but then there's the ones that are like, it's only nipple. It right. could be like Just this. It's a mosquito bite. Yeah. So it's like, it's kind of unfair because if you have a huge areola, you will get censored more than a true. bigger boob with, with the, less areola. That is true. So it's like, you get to show more of the boob if the areola is less. That's yeah. not equality to me. See, so okay. on YouTube, so titty I, I used to do, I used to do these um, titty quality. Ha- titty quality. Titty quality. That's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> I might have to use that because um, they be they be playing me. So on YouTube, I used to get uh, censored all the time because I would do these like swimsuit clothing hauls. I would mm. do bra reviews and mm. stuff like that. And they, I guess, they told my manager that the reason I got demonetized for some of the videos was because the amount of titty that, that was out exposed was, yeah was uh-huh. the not amount of even though it's was, not yeah, nipple even that's, though it's not you know, nipple i couldn't have at least just, half of the titty out now if i want like, to wear a swimsuit with... most swimsuits right i mean come on 75 percent of my titties out if i'm wearing a swimsuit that's what period. i was just gonna say we need so, titty analytics the, the titty <laughs> analytics if, so, if they gave you an email we're that gonna was superimpose like superimpose the best you, graphic on this right here i'm like, trying to tell titty analytics if you got an email that was like like, titty, you titty showed lady. over 60% of yes. titty in your last <laughs> That is post. it. We have That's to block it. That's why we you. That would have given her so much information because then they're like, okay, what is 59% titty? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, if I could find that line, I could stay monetized. So with YouTube, they consider breast meat around the actual titty. You so, just need to get a... According uh, to YouTube, so, to, it is a titty. Okay, so get a YouTube, turtle YouTube, yeah. the, without the nipple. You need a turtleneck. I have on a, a turtleneck, turtleneck line and it's for still big titties. And it's still- 
<laughs> all right, so um, all right, yeah, back to the uh, um, the podcast okay. with Revolt. Uh, uh, take me back through there. Keep me going that way. Yeah, so we started with uh, my fiance has a micro penis. We pitched it. Mm-hmm. They liked it. Um, and we decided like our our podcast would be going down Twitter threads, like rabbit holes of different uh, like Twitter threads, Instagram carousels, uh, Reddit threads, and you know they're crazy as hell on Reddit. Oh yeah, Reddit is off. Reddit is right. nuts. They are mm-hmm. everywhere. So, I love Reddit. Yeah, <laughs> so we decided to do that. So our podcast is really more so like audience focus, which mm-hmm. a lot of podcasts are trying to give you gems or tell you what to do mm-hmm. or tell you that women ain't Too shit. Much opinion. Or, <laughs> t- niggas audience, just audience. shut the fuck up. <laughs> we don't care about like nah. most people don't. Like most people, like how they think is stupid. Right. That's why everybody <laughs> don't most, have a radio most station. Most aren't qualified to be talking about exactly. the stuff that they're talking about. Right. Now, when you have a master's and have right. been a therapist for ten years, mm-hmm. you can talk about some stuff. Right. You know what I'm I didn't Very even want to. I didn't, I didn't even. I didn't even want to use that because right. I'm just like people ain't gonna listen to it anyway. They this don't want she to. She don't flex that, but it's true. Right. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I a fun don't. fact about her. And yeah. My expert is in like inappropriate sexual behavior between juveniles and minors. So it ain't really. I could do. A, a podcast and it would be very entertaining but mm-hmm. it's nasty you know <laughs> so I, I just with with us our shit is more I mean our podcast is more audience focused mm-hmm. which I don't think is a lot of, of it's like fan based focus I mean, that's, a, that's a great place to be yeah, yeah. so it's like yeah. we're not talking about the same thing that mm-hmm. every other podcast there's well, that something that comes up in an signed. article yeah. they talk about it for us it's like what's the what's the wildest lie you ever told uh, a woman or a man. That's what we did and on stage we get, today. Yeah. yeah, we did that today. And you said you like or, go down that rabbit hole. Yeah, and or what's the that's, pettiest? That's a dope concept. Yeah. yeah. And I think just conceptually, um, and I, you know, this is kind of giving away our sauce a little bit. No, but, don't hey, give we, away the sauce. No, no, no. We at iHeartRadio. We at iHeartRadio. We got to give them something. Give, give them a little something. Give them a little something. Let's keep the gate closed. They ain't going to cook with it anyway. You know what I mean? We can open the chain a little bit. No, I'm opening it. I'm opening it. Damn, he just... Fuck it. All right, so... Revolt. I mean, I, I just think that this is a, a good gem for anybody trying to get involved with big companies anyways. Mm-hmm. I think everybody tries to compete with whatever their biggest shit is, mm-hmm. and that's stupid. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's like us making a podcast that's like Carisha Please. Right, like, right, right. Gotcha. We're not going to compete for right. that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I think that it was obviously like our, it's just in our nature to not have a messy disrespectful podcast mm-hmm, either right. way and my my background is so comedy that that's just what I wanted to do anyways right. mm-hmm. but I think it's very very big to be different too you mm-hmm. know yeah. and Revolt as a whole was focused on uh, interview specific podcasts mm-hmm. like a lot of podcasts are specifically interviews you right. know mm-hmm. And I don't think this really hurts us because we already started our shit. Mm. But I think that whenever somebody is starting something, they have to look at the landscape first right. and see what's missing. Mm-hmm. Because right. a lot of people just think they're the shit and they think that whatever whatever I make, everybody's going to watch. They're going to love it. They're right. going right. to right. 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 watch They're not yeah. thinking like, okay, I made this great idea that's the same idea as this one uh-huh. and everyone's already watching mm-hmm. this. So for Revolt, we just saw, you know, it, it wasn't even a matter of our audience or blowing up quick because everybody thinks that that's how you make it. Mm-hmm. Right. You drop one thing and it, and it blows up. Mm-hmm. For around. Revolt, why they kind of like took to us was because not only was it comedy and everything else was music and celebrities mm-hmm. and very like mm-hmm. kind of egocentric, right, which is right. mostly podcast. The general podcast. They, want, they, they have stuff. a draw, you yeah, know, right. we have Chris mm-hmm. Rock, so that's mm-hmm. why you're watching. Mm-hmm. As opposed to us, we don't got no guests. We have no. guests every now and then, but yeah. we're right. the focus. We've only had two guests in the, uh, the, whole, in the whole year. year. Which mm-hmm. is slow growth, right. but mm-hmm. the growth is all about us, you right. know, as opposed to... That we, means that there's real substance. grow organically and we saw mm-hmm. that the the team members and the the, the high level people at, at revolt they were actually telling us like we like your because you don't do this because you do this but because and we were just we just found that we were different mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that just gave us our own lane to grow in as opposed to competing because it doesn't it, it, you don't get the same information that you get from every other podcast you know so we really focus on audience interactions you know so we'll 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 go on twitter and pose a question to see what they say i wake up at three o'clock in the morning like oh shit what would happen if you you know you didn't feed your at night and he got 
food from another woman. Mm-hmm. You know, like stuff like that. And then they'll they'll come and we'll get like all of these different responses that are just amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, and so it makes for a really good show. And so Revolt, I, I think they really saw the potential and how we could grow because, like I said, we launched with them. Mm-hmm. So um, now that we we had some decent growth, uh, I think we are almost at like fifty thousand okay. on YouTube. Bet, bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm I'm like an analytics whore. You gotta be in so, the day and age. Weird way to put it. Uh huh. I've been whoring <laughs> for the analytics. I'm out dick here for the analytics. I'm sucking the <laughs> analytics nutsack. You know what I'm saying? I'm selling I'm out here <laughs> on it for these analytics. analytics. <laughs> you the give me some percentages. Numbers. I'll give you some of this ass. Okay, forty dollars. <laughs> like, you, you can just you look that up. <laughs> it's available uh, on the app. Yes, on the ass. <laughs> no. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's. That's the premise of, of, of Thick Threads mm-hmm. and how we got That's started cool. and what it is. And, it, you know, we had our live show today mm-hmm. for the first time. Yep. Um, and it was, I how was nervous. How does that nervous. feel? Ooh, yeah, how I does that feel? Lord child. It was really cool. I had, um, she mentioned Damn Internet You Scary, which is the uh, podcast I've had for a little bit longer with a comedian to, to hear more. Mm-hmm. And we had our first live show in his hometown, St. Louis, last year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's really, really cool because Stage and Tony yep. Baker and yep. stuff mm-hmm. like that. And even beyond them, I think that because podcasting as a whole is is kind of new, yeah. um, yes, the fact is. that, I mean, there have been people podcasting for a minute, but right. I think that like in mainstream, exactly. like now everybody yeah, now, is right. blowing right. up. Right. Right. And I think that live touring podcast mm-hmm. is a very newish Absolutely. Like, concept, you know? Newish, yeah. lucrative, and just another good way to touch a real audience. Right. In an for age sure. where everything is so digital now. Right. Man. Which I'm not this mad huge at, right? For us. Yeah. Being yeah. able to touch people and, and laugh with people and just connect with mm-hmm. people and on a so personal dope. level. That yeah. has to be really cool. This was and one of the most amazing experiences that I've ever had. Especially with yeah. somebody as big as Revolt behind y'all and right. partnered with y'all. It's, you know it's such a cool cosign. So, yeah. I, you know, big shout out to Revolt. Absolutely. But we've been yes. seeing, like, we, we just be tapped in with the, the culture. And it's like, you know, we're in Atlanta, so we have to shout out, you know, people like 85 South. You know, mm-hmm. y'all, that, we yep. saw pictures yep. on hey. the ones. Those I feel guys like right yes. there. those dudes are like real comedians mm-hmm. and they're Absolutely. like real stand up yeah. Yeah. but all three of them together on that couch on stage it kind of gives pot- type of shit right. Right. but like um you know anybody who's been watching all deaf for the past 10 years my specialty is uh, like group love, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like between like roast me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, one of my the, favorite the, shows. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. One of my favorite. <laughs> shows. Seriously, you know, um, even like um, you know, Great Taste, which is a show that's like kind of like a debate mm-hmm. show. That's like basically like a group of people arguing. Mm-hmm. And then even singular shows that I did like Dad Jokes, which was one on one. It really like took off when I started doing like tag team or group because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, people like seeing groups of people having fun. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's a big reason why these these streamers like Kai Sinat, not necessarily like the shows I did, I'm just saying that the the general mm-hmm. atmosphere, mm-hmm. they like seeing groups of people in a yeah. natural setting. Mm-hmm. And that's why you can have a, um, a interview with 21 Savage in a pro- in a professional setting, and it doesn't do as well as him just chilling in a living in room a with basement. Kai Sinat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because the audience yeah. wants to see Authenticity. Right. They want to see groups see having people fun. Doing it, it what makes, they do. It, it makes them exactly. feel like like they know relatable. you, like they're yeah. friends. They're mm-hmm. relatable. Yeah. yeah. And yes. people don't know how difficult this thing mm-hmm. is because, like, just being on set so much, I learned that a big crew, all these lights, it made the talent nervous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's like if you have a nervous Twenty One Savage that's like mm-hmm. looking around and you asking him questions, mm-hmm. he's gonna be way different than if it was just, just a it random in the... nigga in his mm-hmm. living room. Yep. And they're that, so you could yep. tell they're comfortable, you mm-hmm. know. So I feel like that tapping into that energy is kind of like the content that I want to make now. Mm-hmm. You know? Now see, that's and the that sauce goes, right there. Yeah, that's, that's the sauce. Like, now you're giving away the <laughs> sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that goes for other industries too. I, you know, I I model. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely about, wanted to get into that yeah. as well. And so when I do, I uh, shout out to Imaz. That's my photographer. Mm-hmm. I've been working on him for years. Imaz, this is amazing. Catches my best angles. Period. To the point where I'd be like, if you see me in person. You know, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. No, but no, I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> right. But 
it'll be like I'll do my photo shoots with them and then you know sometimes I'll just you know snap a picture in the mirror mm -hmm. and the people the picture in the mirror will just go fucking nuts mm -hmm. like, like why the I picture spend in all the this mirror money will go nuts mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying and I'm just like they're like oh this was so personal I felt like I was there with you you know what I'm saying so that just speaks it's to your porn. point it's not uh, porn. No, 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 not you, not oh. you. No, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me clarify. What? This has nothing to do with you. Jeez. I, I was told a long, long time ago that Pornhub changed the whole industry in terms of, like, how, their rollout, how they, how they um, show their videos, mm -hmm. their search engine, YouTube, all of these companies that have, like, a, uh, like an interface, right. all copied Pornhub. And ever since I was told that, I started looking. I mean, I was already looking at yeah. I'm about to say. <laughs> I, I need some to, analytics. I need to know if these claims. I need some analytics. Let's spend a good four hours. He's <laughs> yeah. doing some research. Come back in, arms swollen. <laughs> he, yeah, he's looking up the titty <laughs> legs. He's looking up the cumulitics. Like, but, uh, we, uh, I, yeah, let once, me hear what you found out. Once, yes. I, once I started tapping into that, <laughs> and I was like, okay, professionally, they are actually killing it. Mm -hmm. I started, like, kind of looking into other things. And of course. what she was just talking about is the emergence of amateur porn. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to be graphic, but you got a whole camera team, lights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People ain't going, they going right. to be a little bit nervous when they smash it. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> but the phone... Where you just see a dude with a dirty ass <laughs> room. You got a mattress. Thick, just, bro, mattress no, no, with no, no, no headboard. No headboard. No, no, headboard. no, yeah. <laughs> no furniture. No, no sheets. A chick with a nice body. Hey, pregnant Maybe pit bull in the corner. <laughs> hey. I ain't seen that one. Yes, but, yeah. uh, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. I'll send you for sure. Look, there's a stain on the bottom mattress, you know, on the box spring. But when you start, you start seeing like, oh, there's a market for people that are just mm -hmm. like, you're, you're spending all that money for no reason. We don't mm -hmm. care about the production People kind of wanted to get mm -hmm. back to, We you know, to see the real yeah, real. The real it's then like they, like, they just oh. feel connected to you and they feel like it's personal because it's not so glitz and glam mm -hmm. it's like if I was standing it's here real. next to you it's authentic uh, it, yes mm -hmm. it feels authentic and so that is kind of speaking to just how things have gone so some people I don't know if you've seen or I'm sure you guys have seen people who start podcasts and all they doing is have a tripod right here standing in front of a wall lighting his ass right, you know yep. like yeah. everything is terrible sound is terrible but it takes off you know yep. we've there's some creators that we watch and we'll, we'll go back and look at how they started and we're mm -hmm. like oh snap like mm -hmm. they really started in the trenches and the like gutter in, of, in a, of tech in the world where all of the glitz and the glam, half of the shit is fake anyway. Mm -hmm. More than half of it is fake mm -hmm. anyway. People aren't really living that life for real, for highlight real like reels, that. Some, yeah. exactly, mm -hmm. Giving people highlight reels. Mm -hmm. Being able to connect with some people authentically, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Whether it's via porn, mm -hmm. whether it's yeah. via podcasting, mm -hmm. or whether it's via analytics. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Very professional. Hey, uh -huh. I got you. This is what I do. <laughs> this is what I do. <laughs> We're about to collab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but... The authenticity is yeah. just what people want. That's why reality shows like took off like that because yeah. people want to see, hey, they go through the same bullshit that I go through. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They like to the jack, they dick to the same stuff I like to jack my dick to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, hey, so we can talk for real good at this. Oh, yeah, we're we, oh, yeah, we outside. I was oh, double no, talking. No, we're good. No, we're good. Okay, okay. I was double talking because I'm like, no, I'm going to say one, one no, thing. thing. He said, and I'm going to say, okay, yes, I heard. He said, I heard. Come on. No, so, so yeah, I, I would, I would, do my little modeling or whatever mm -hmm. and with with my photographer and they would be like yo can we hear some noise can we see a video can we you know can we see the video behind the scenes mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. you doing this photo shoot and i'm like oh that's lit okay yeah i can show some behind the scenes so i just started setting up like little tripods behind the scenes of mm -hmm. my photo shoots and those are Took like go, go crazier you know, than mm. than the ones, the final product. Well, that I'm shit like, pissed I'm looking you. at the final product. Like, I was just you know, about to say, it's like, I don't get all this, this. they get all this makeup, they did all this stuff, mm -hmm. and y'all just want to see the BTS from the yeah. camera. Yeah. The, the, the BTS is stuff. going viral. Yeah, yeah. So, tell me that ahead of time before, yeah. I, before I hire I just shoot all, all BTS. People. Fuck it. Right. Right. Walk around. Right. 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 We got so much BTS, and we need to start releasing some BTS. Shit, we have so much. So with that being said, what's what's coming up next? So we got the the podcast with Revolt, right? Right, that's mm -hmm. going crazy right now. Just did the first live show. What are the next steps for both Persephone, for Pat, individually, together? What's coming up next? I can speak Ooh. to together real yeah. quick. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we've we been 
very, very strategic through all of this. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And I think that's because of how it started. It, it started in a business sense. It wasn't just mm-hmm. like, you know, Dame and Persephone hitting hitting me up like, let's just start another podcast, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which would have been a, a rough sale, even though I, yeah. I, I would love to. I, I definitely wanted to work with Persephone. Not a rough sale. It would have been a rough sale ah. just because it's like saying... You got to think of how how great you guys approached me. You, mm. It was very, very, it was a great pitch. You mm. know, they were just like, I mean, we're, we're, like we're tapped in with Revolt. Uh-huh. We want to make a show. We know you mm. make shows. We want to do it with you. Let's, yeah. yeah. And I was mm-hmm. like, bet, let's Absolutely. let's write something right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, but we had also been talking about different uh, different shows that we wanted to do before that, too. For sure. Remember the dream before show. Before the Revolt kind of deal yeah, came. Yeah, we tried okay. to do a music show, mm-hmm. but our music show, we kept That's getting right. copywritten. And then uh, we were going to do like uh, a... This is a funny story. Yeah. We, had a, we had a show... <laughs> That was a ripoff of 106 in Park. Uh-huh. It was called Ronald Sits in Park. Ronald <laughs> Sits in Park. The logo That's was actually really good. I the love that. The logo was a ripoff of 106. You know them like mm-hmm. random yeah, brown little, and yeah, 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 yeah. yellow honeycombs uh-huh. or something. Yeah, the, it was that, uh-huh. and it was a, a, a picture <laughs> of just white man sitting in the sitting park. Sitting in the park. <laughs> and it was called it was, Ronald Sits in Park. It was like it was Ronald Sits in Park, <laughs> and we were doing a top five of because. Um, Music videos, like if you are into the artist, they're mm-hmm. still they're still good. Yeah. But back in the right. day, TRL, 106 and Park, that was the latest shit. Yeah, yeah. that's For music real. videos yeah. were important, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I feel like we there was like a a lacking in that. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it, it, working at All Def, I was on the comedy side. I visited music every now and then, and I just didn't work. I just didn't mess with music mm-hmm. because right. between the flagging, they'll take shit down. Mm-hmm. It was just too much. Mm-hmm. So. We did this. We did we did a couple of different types. We did like popular music, then we did just underground music. Mm-hmm. Our first episode got taken down. Damn, within really? Within 20 minutes. Yeah. Some cop- like some copyright people were, still, really? people were still commenting like, "Oh, this is a good idea." Uh-huh. Right. Out of here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like we had like, like four or five wait. episodes recorded. <laughs> and we had like a carousel of like 10 different ready to uh, go, like ready to go. I mean, and I was like, "Hey, Pat, like this one got taken down and then we go back two minutes yeah, later and I'm like taken. another one got taken <laughs> down so it was like this media is not yep. available so we were anymore. trying so right right like, right and then we talked about um, a, a mixology show mm-hmm. where we were gonna have some people come on some expert mixologists make drinks and in. make drinks okay. and we were gonna do some some crazy type drinks probably mm-hmm. stuff that you would think is nasty but end up being like real good mm-hmm. this is and good then, stuff because people think that your first try be working I was yeah. just about to say that too <laughs> yeah. you, you, got, you gotta hit a couple different ones until yeah. That one hit. Sometimes it hits the first mm-hmm. time. Right. Majority mm-hmm. of the time it's gonna take a couple. Like yes. this, this ain't my first rodeo. Right. You know what I'm so saying? in Doing the meantime, like this, so in the mean? meantime of trying to find that show, my manager hit us up. Like, hey, I have a contact at Revolt. Like, do you, would you guys be interested? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. So while we in this whole thing about trying to create these shows, then let's 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 do this. And that's kind of how it naturally just flowed into yep. it because we both had ones. we, we yep. already knew how to work with each other from the past podcast that mm-hmm. we have been on from me being on your gaming channel from uh, the cloudy uh, podcast, damning it at you, scary. Like so, it was just a kind of like a, a natural thing that progression. Was already, yeah, 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 it sure. was already yeah. set in in the works for us. So, so just real quick, just to finish um, in terms of like. What's next? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we were just very strategic about it. Mm-hmm. We came into it in a in not just like let's just make something that we hope works. Right. Which right. Kind of there was an element of that. Right. Right. But it was also like a pitch. You know, right. like we made it for a reason. Right. And within that year, when I when I lock in with somebody, I want to build like an empire with mm-hmm. them Absolutely. because I don't really lock in with everybody. Right. 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 So it's like. With the podcast, we had to make like a bank account, like a joint yeah. type of thing. So yeah, it's nah, just real like, business, hey, real business. Yeah. What else? Yeah. What else can we do? Because mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not just trying to like do one thing. Mm-hmm. Like I'm an idea guy. Mm-hmm. So we just started. We just started like the best advice I ever heard in college was to uh, link up what you love with what you want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and Absolutely. that will that give is you dope. That's, that's that will one. give you a career that doesn't feel like work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So everything that I do is insanely connected to something that I love. Mm-hmm. So That's the saying. If you love what you do, you'll never it work a day. Work. Exactly. Yeah. So the first thing was true crime. I'm a mm-hmm. huge true crime okay. person. Me too. I'm one of those fucking psychos. It calms me. It'll be like midnight. <laughs> I'm like, I need to go to sleep. And I'll turn something on. Forensic like, like, files. Nigga murdered 4,000 <laughs> people. I'm like, 64 mm-hmm. times. Like, and I'm like, oh. ooh, you found, <laughs> you found it from Peaceful a piece slumber. of soup from <laughs> a fiber of carpet? Tell <laughs> me more. But it's, it's also like a weird thing where it's like, I grew up a little sheltered. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I didn't grow up in the streets or anything. So I like to know 
what everybody is thinking. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I need to know what crazy people are thinking. I need mm-hmm. to know everything, you know? You need to know how everything works. I'm obsessed <laughs> yeah. with... I, hey, I get it. Psychos, you know what I mean? It, like and animals. Literally, like, <laughs> everything. So I try to... I try to research how other people think. Mm-hmm. So, true crime. I got crime, a good book for you. I got a good book Hell for you. Hell yes. I, I just, you. hey, I just started reading. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Not reading in general, oh just reading books. For sure. <laughs> but um, I, I'm just really, really into that. So, we developed a true crime uh, show that's also on the channel mm-hmm. called Grizzly Tales. Yep. Okay. And then we had another meeting that's just like about um, how everybody waits for a, everybody wants to travel. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the right. one yeah. thing that right. when you look at old people on their deathbed, what they regretted, they all didn't see. They all didn't see. There. So I so we made like something that was just like, hey, how do we make a travel show without waiting for National Geographic or so you know the right. Travel uh-huh. Channel? So uh, we basically just ended up making our entire YouTube not just the podcast, but we have a true crime show, we have a travel show called Re- We Trippin'. Mm-hmm. So for the last year, we were recording all these things and not putting them out, and mm-hmm. I've never done that. Mm-hmm. You know, in the in the just age holding of holding on yeah. to it in the vault. Yeah, yeah. we have a year's worth of travel. Uh-huh. Uh, it's insane, travel and we went to about fifteen to seventeen different places. It was wow. it was so, um, like season related. Mm-hmm. So we did something that was specifically summers. Uh, we went okay, to places okay, that okay. where the leaves changed for fall. Mm-hmm. We went to places that were snowy for winter. But and we it wasn't domestically, like the, so we uh-huh. we we have we only have uh, Canada and Mexico in in the international. In, I mean, there's a lot of places just right here in our own but, backyard. Well, that's that, that, that was really our thing. Yeah. Yeah, the premise like, of the show is to be able to travel without spending a whole bag, right, right, right. or having or to, time, yeah. yeah, or having go to prepare just for, yeah. yeah, for a year before you go somewhere. Like we went to Utah and we saw the most beautiful mm-hmm. scenery. Nobody that thinks it, about it, these. It right, don't right. even look yeah. like it's on Earth. Uh-huh. Some of the stuff, like we take road trips sometimes, mm. and it looked beautiful. Like our birthdays are very close to what each are your other. Birthdays? Uh, I'm September 1st. He's September 2nd. Oh, so <laughs> just had birthday. We- Mars or Venus or Uranus. Um, <laughs> I love why that. did you why did you stop? Why why did you do that? <laughs> why look, Uranus. So you seven. Look, I'm sorry. So when is when this is this dropping? This is how when it is, happens. This is why people like us because I throw a nah, joke. It doesn't land like, to him. It lands to everybody else but him. And then he he, he roasts me about it. I am the roast me receiver the ro- of the world from him. Debatable. Receiver, and <laughs> you be lighting my ass up. <laughs> uh, when is it dropping? Where are, are, are we? Is oh, it out? Dropped. Oh, it, oh, it's dropped. So okay, here's so the thing. Out. Yeah, we started around our birthdays last year, which was September. Okay. So we just started recording stuff. We went to Cabo. We went to uh, Catalina. Mm-hmm. And these were just like birthday trips and gotcha, stuff. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we we were like, hey, we should just make a travel show mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. we start ourselves and finance ourselves, and mm-hmm. it should be about how. People just do too much when they want to travel. Right. Like right. when when somebody says they want to travel, nine times out of ten they're waiting to get two weeks off from their job. Which right. when the fuck is that gonna happen? Right. And they want to go to Greece. Yeah. They want to go to all these crazy right. places. All kinds right. of, yeah. So you're waiting for a a break from your work. You gotta have a bread, and you gotta to, have to go. crazy amount of breads. And it's like when you you waiting mm-hmm. for these two things to link up, mm-hmm. it, you might be planning for something. 20 year years from now. And, and there's mm-hmm. articles that talk about, like, you don't actually start enjoying your vacation till like, day three. Yeah. Right. So, day one and two, you, you stressed you, out. It's too so, much. it's like, you gotta, you gotta, for those, like, those long, those long trips, you gotta actually, like, plan to be, um, mm-hmm. to, to be out for a long period of time. But when, when your flight is two hours away and you're going to stay in a right cave. There. Exactly. Yeah. So we were basically we like, in a cave what? in Utah uh-huh. and it was just the craziest thing that we've ever we seen. We were basically just like, what is, what's an hour away? Mm-hmm. What's right. two hours away? What's three hours away? What, where can we go that's unexplored, that's dope? And we can, we can kind of like get that travel bug out. This actually started Last year, I went to Alaska, mm-hmm. and I did a big production. Wow, for a, um Yeah, it was Haynes, Alaska. Mm-hmm. I did a show called Black to Nature, mm-hmm. and it's basically, <laughs> it was basically like every episode was a different influencer um, who was black, 
going out and doing wild shit that they never would that do. That niggas do not do in Alaska. I was in Alaska. Alaska. <laughs> like, I thought there was just penguins niggas, and they, snow. Are there niggas in Alaska? <laughs> yeah, no. There are. Absolutely not. in Alaska. We I was couple. expecting to be like, yes. Okay, that, was, that was the next year. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. That was the next we year. We went so the next year. <laughs> at the time, I did this production, and they liked my episode so much, they were like, because I have a show called Pat Geo on my own channel mm-hmm. that's basically like exploring all the weird stuff in the world, animals, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So they were ba- they approached me and they were like, we want to sell this one episode to give you your own series. So I promised the producer, like, I'm not really well traveled. I don't know airports like that. Mm-hmm. I don't. I haven't been anywhere. So I was like, while you're selling this, I will personally travel and do my homework so okay. that by the time gotcha. this sells... Wait, so I'm homework? <laughs> No, I literally <laughs> made a show with you. I love messing with him like this. I literally, you see why we get along? Yeah, I, I literally it, I was it. like, I, I kind of just took that challenge and I was like, I want to be someone established in the travel industry by the time you sell this. Right. Mm-hmm. So that it's an easier sell for you guys. Mm-hmm. Which is great and also funny because now that We Trippin' is kind of like, they they still haven't dropped that, but I we're we're like a season in. Okay. Okay. Out now every yeah, time, yeah, 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 now yeah. every time I see them, they be like. Oh, you still doing that travel <laughs> show, huh? They be kind of mad at me a little bit. <laughs> like, hey, but shit, we just I'm hopping on. We it. just hey, found hey, like yeah. a cheap way to do a, 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 to that actually do dope. a travel show on mm-hmm. our own. Mm-hmm. Um, I was familiar enough with production to know how to make it not look like a vlog because mm-hmm. n- normally when people be traveling, right, it yeah, looks yeah, like yeah, a vlog. Yeah. Right. So I wanted to shoot it really like a travel show, and we had multiple something meetings. that belongs on a network mm-hmm. somewhere. Exactly, yeah, just little you. little. Like, this is more sauce, but like, even just little meetings about how to shoot B roll, you know, mm-hmm. when we, we would have. He definitely just makes he all taught the, me B roll. All the and now I'm like the, the B roll queen. B-roll She's so queen. good. Between B roll and BTS, I <laughs> swear. Crazy. We're going to get it. I'm out So it, it was actually two advantages. Not only did, did we get a year advanced, like, we got to shoot all four seasons before even dropping it. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. Which to me in digital media. So now you're just pushing content out yeah. at this point. It's like, yeah. f- it, it's it, that's like forever. A Not year. Yet. Like, usually, mm-hmm. like, like you you already know, we probably going to shoot this and you're going to drop this whenever you Tomorrow. want. Right. <laughs> yeah. you know? But we were literally shooting stuff in summer and we were just talking like, not yet, not yet. Right. Mm-hmm. We went a whole year and then we started releasing it a year in advance. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. then we also had the, the leeway to add more things. Right. So uh. we started dropping this summer and we were mm-hmm. like, oh, this summer's a little light because that's yeah, when we started. Yeah. Right. We went to Miami, Miami did some stuff. Niagara uh, we Falls. went to Niagara Falls. Mm-hmm. And now we're mm-hmm. going into the fall season. We have stuff from last year, but we're also adding stuff mm-hmm. from this year. Now, how do you, um, this is some more sauce you're probably going to give out. How do you keep from dating your stuff? Like that when you're, when you're, when yeah. you're, Filming and when you're recording and all that, yeah. how do you keep from dating it? So you said you recorded all this stuff and it was a mm-hmm. year ago, mm-hmm. uh, and now it's being released now. So give give them a little bit of sauce for all the creators and the podcasters and all this stuff. How to keep yourself from dating your content too much so you can still use it a mm-hmm. year or two or however many years from then. You know what I think? I think that, um, and this is why I'm so lucky for my audience and all Def's audience. They give me so much grace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when I learned that Seinfeld didn't blow up till season three. Mm-hmm. And then I did Roast Me, and the first season was a disaster. Mm-hmm. And then I went into the marketing of that first season, and I figured it out. And then the second season was okay, mm-hmm. and then the third season blew up. Yep. That's when I was like, wait, Seinfeld, me? Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. both, well, obviously Woo. Seinfeld is insanely bigger, but I was just like, it, t- it takes time. People nah, yeah. think that everything has to be figured out, everything has to be good by s- the first you episode. You gotta start shooting it first and work out all those you bugs gotta yeah. and those figure kicks it out. And, yeah. Give yeah. yourself sure. some grace, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, like, definitely. we're so hard on ourselves as creators. Mm-hmm. So I think that you have to be open to learning new things. And we knew that our first, that's why we, that's why we kept traveling this year to mm-hmm. add to this summer, mm-hmm. because... When we first started off, like Catalina, we weren't shooting that well at all. Mm-hmm. Like we were, we didn't even know we had a show at first, you mm-hmm. know. And then as the the as it went on, we got a little better. Then I introduced a drone. I learned how to drone, and I got like really, really like mm-hmm. those dope shots, bro. In, in TV, I, drones I know, are know. everything. Right. Oh. Yeah, they really are. They really are. Drones, just drones are ninety five percent of what makes it <laughs> yeah. look professional. We've we've found <laughs> ways to to improve our content from season to mm-hmm. season. So it is nice that we we did shoot some stuff back then. But, I mean, it's not that far dated. So the right, good okay, thing is, you. like, there's still, like, the restaurants that we it's went to. It's kind of timeless yeah. stuff, too, right? Like, yeah. it doesn't matter yeah. when you really, really watch like, it. We're it's getting kind of better timeless. At shooting. Yeah. We're right. getting better at planning stuff mm-hmm. to shoot. But, like, I think overall it was really, like, um, a, a year later, 
we kind of figured out like, okay, this episode is a little weak, blah, 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 blah. But it was also how we formatted. We were really, really smart to match what we shot in the mm-hmm. field mm-hmm. to in the studio. We mm-hmm. work out of a podcast uh, studio. Gotcha, mm-hmm. gotcha. So it's okay. almost like you would see the travel show and then it cuts to something like this that's mm-hmm. in a professional setting and we kind of do a recap. Mm-hmm. So in my opinion, that kind of kept it from being dated gotcha. mm-hmm. because even the, sh- the, sh- the episodes that weren't shot as well mm-hmm. had a professional aspect mm-hmm. in it and it kind of right. all tied it in together. That's you know? some and, sauce. And we also, <laughs> when we're going over our like creative outlines and stuff, we actually look up the different like places that we went mm-hmm. currently. So like if there's a restaurant that we went to, we'll actually go to the website to see like what they're doing now. Right. You know, and it's still, ha- everything has still been consistent with with all the the places that we went so it still kind of follows in that consistency so Um, what i want the listeners and the viewers and everybody that's engaged with this to take away from kind of what we were just talking right there you put real work into yeah and a lot of this microwavable kind of content Mm -hmm. everybody wants to be a podcast everybody wants to do all that hey by all means go be a podcaster go create your content but it takes some real work it takes some real commitment like you Mm -hmm. really gotta do your research look up and see Mm -hmm. what the restaurant's doing now and all that stuff like that Mm -hmm. so I just I want to make sure that I bring that there and so what what we do is so much fun Right. I would not trade what I do for it I don't know why more people don't want to do you know what I'm saying well they do but they feel like there's a cash grab or scared everybody's looking for cash grabs exactly and so people come up to us, like a lot of people came up to us at Revolt World mm-hmm. and was asking like, okay, what's the formula? And I'm telling them, I'm like, look, what do you love to do? Because if you love to do it, you'll feel good Not about, about doing that. it. Right. I say my my one gem to them is if you're going to start a podcast, you might want to do it on something that you would be comfortable not getting paid to do. Mm-hmm. So if you love it and you want to just do it on your off time, your free time, something that you're not even getting paid to do, then that to me shows a passion that's where you for start. it. And that's why if you do it like we we enjoy doing the podcast. Absolutely. We enjoy uh, roasting each other. I do these bad bars. I mean, they're not really that bad, but he calls them bad bars. <laughs> but I enjoy like his feedback mm-hmm. telling me that my shit's trash. And I'm trying to like tell him like, no, it's not. This is what it means. Mm-hmm. But it's like just the banter back and forth we really enjoy. So even though he's not hitting. <laughs> hey, her bars be trash. No, my bars be hitting. Hey, the audience <laughs> clapped for me today. Because you were in front of them. No, he no. said all he do is just no, be in front of them. they liked it and they're excited for Courtesy it. Courtesy claps. But this, is, <laughs> but this is a dynamic that people yeah, nah, enjoy. Definitely. So And we enjoy. So he loves laughing at me. I could be the butt of his jokes. And vice versa, I, mm-hmm. I, I be, you know, I come wow. at you a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> I just tell them if you enjoy doing it on your off time mm-hmm. without getting paid, then that's something that, you know, may feel good to your right. audience. They may feel organic keeps and natural, too. keeps it authentic. And if you're going to do that, then, yeah, do your podcast. Because more than likely you won't get paid for the first, you know, X that amount part. of months, That's years before so, you start actually, So you, you got to be happy you doing be this happy without doing being, it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like practice, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? You don't get paid to practice. No, nope, sure don't. Yeah. Or the AI. What, yeah, what AI? Practice. Practice. We're talking about practice. <laughs> We're talking about practice, We're talking about man. practice? The original <laughs> AI, you got to clarify. Oh, Mr. Allen, Allen Iverson. Iverson. Yeah, there you go. Good. Not artificial intelligence. I hate that that's like the mix-up, right? <laughs> no, don't don't do my boy like that. That's dope. So what you got coming up, Persephone? What you what you got? Shoot, I, know I got a little, and we a little uh, yeah. I got a little cooking show. Okay, coming up. Yeah. Like I've been working behind the scenes. I, I'm not uh, a chef like that, but I like to cook. Right. So um, and I I like to cook different things like fun little um unique dishes that we haven't really heard of. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm gonna start releasing. Some of that I do, um, like clothing hauls on YouTube. So I'm gonna start that up, and I'm working on some music. Okay, dope. I'm working on music. I have one song out. One song I put out. One song in 2020 <laughs> called "Less Vibe." It's, it's a vibe. It's a really good bop. Um, yeah, we can we can catch that on Apple Music, uh-huh, yeah. or Spotify, all yep, that. It's, right, all, it's on all platforms. Cool. So, um, I've I've just been doing some, you know, behind the scenes, like working on music. And yeah. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. So y'all got to make sure y'all come back. Mm-hmm. Next time y'all are in the A, we'll do this again. Yeah. We'll, we'll, sure. we'll catch up. You know what I'm saying? See what all y'all Absolutely. got going on. And, uh, you know, just keep uh, 
keep striving, keep doing our thing, man. I appreciate mm-hmm. y'all sliding by. Thank you, like, man. You, up, man. You really easy to talk to. And yeah. that, that hey, man, it's what we do. So much, yeah. so much easier, yeah. This is what we do. And when I'm out there on the West Coast, because I, I got Come family, on. friends. Hell yeah. Hey, I yeah. love it out there. I, I lived in Van Nuys for like a year. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, bro, I, I used to do reality television. Did you? You would never know that. No. Yeah. Well, well, like well, directing, well, producing? Nah, and actually like on reality. Oh, you was, you was reality. I know, I know, I know. No, no, you got to do, you got to Hey, bro, we got to cut this out, Wait, bro. wait, so no, would no, you no. fight? What? You, you had right. to fight now, nowadays. So, okay, so. <laughs> and now, watch this. now watch this. So we remember Bad Girls Club, right? Absolutely. You were in Bad Boys Club. No, no, no. I knew he was going to say that. He was one of the ones that the girls call over and they'd be like, my friend about to come over. No, no, watch this. So they did a spinoff. Oxygen did a spinoff called... Uh, love games, bad girls need love too. Okay, and it was thirteen eligible bachelors, and it was three bad girls from oh, the bad girls bachelor? season. I was one of the Shit. eligible bachelors. Hey, what was your How'd you nickname? Do? Uh, the player. They call me the player. <laughs> How'd you do? Oh, I made it all the way to the season finale, baby. Oh, come oh. on now, you Who know we from you the out, A, man. I'm from the A. That raised me like a pimp. Hey. You know what I mean? hey, come on now. Uh, so I told you like outcast. Oh, so did you get one of the three? <laughs> yeah, I did. You got one of the three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We went the winner. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's so, hard. so yeah, that, that's why I was out in LA. And then I just like stayed out there for a year afterwards, just living my absolute best life. Okay. I'm sure. Living I'm my sure. absolute best life. In LA. Hey, did you stay then I was with like, the okay, baddie I need to go home. After you want a baddie. Yeah. Hey, did, you, did you stay with the baddie? That oh, no, no, no. I had a little spot out there, you know what I'm saying? Because, oh, you know, we had to damn. bring him in and out. You did you me? get to smash? Oh, absolutely. Oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was wondering, like, the realness one? of that. Like, right. Oh, no, that shit is real. So, like, after, at the end of those things, the two be really into each other? No, absolutely. 100%. But uh, nah, definitely here. when I slide I'm out there. I'm on the show. Oh, mission accomplished. I'm going to come out there and fuck with y'all for real. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. I love to come around and just hang out with y'all. And you know what I'm saying? Hell Keep some yeah. shit out on the West Coast. Yeah. All right, y'all. That's what's now with John Marshall, my boy Pat Cloud in the building. Appreciate and Persephone. this, man. Hey, Radio. Thank you. Later, guys.